The theatrical, I made a documentary on disability, but probably focused on my disability from a first and third person perspective. But I am one of a billion disabled people in the world, so as you can imagine, there are many, many, many of the disabilities in the world apart from the sizes and the pleaser, which I have. So I decided to make another documentary exploring other people with disabilities and their opinions of a matter. So my name is Farah. I am 30. I live in the US. My name is Oliver Lam Watson and I'm 25 years old. I am Nora Luna. I'm originally from Norway but I'm living in Edinburgh. My name is Charlie Fogarty and I am an inspirational, motivational speaker. And I have um, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and Fibromyalgia and a bunch of other really fun stuff. My story just starts with that. I was born with Ella Dunlop syndrome. I was born with a disability that affects my left leg, um, basically meaning that for the past 15 years I've been on it, able to walk on it, and I've been using crutches ever since. I have what is called an ABI, which is an acquired brain injury, because in March 2012 I was crossing the road and got hit by an oncoming car. Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is a connective tissue disorder. So all of the great connective tissue that holds my joints in place and that makes up my blood vessels and my muscles and all that stuff um, doesn't work right. It's hyperelastic, so it's extra stretchy, um, which causes a lot of mobility issues and a lot of dislocations. I injured myself quite a lot as a kid. Um, and that got worse with age quite quickly. Uh, we would find out that I suddenly dislocated my finger at an airport for putting down a, a backpack. Fibromyalgia is another uh, primary diagnosis that I have. And that basically means <clears throat> that my nerve endings don't process sense, um, sensation properly. And so um, I have a extreme pain response all the time even when not presented with painful stimuli. Around two years ago, when I finished my architecture degree, I decided to put that all to one side and pick up wheelchair fencing and, um, and fitness. And so now I basically run a YouTube channel on how to change the face of disability, and I also fence wheelchair um, for Team GB. It's been very hard for me to do things that I used to do, like things like playing football don't get me wrong i still play but it's a lot harder and takes a lot more effort i think that some of the perceptions of disabled people from able-bodied people are far, far weaker and they need to be helped more. But as we've seen from some people, that is further from the truth and disabled people can be fucking awesome. It's not my opinion, it's fact. I think um, people's perceptions are based on the first thing that they see of you and I think uh, for a lot of disabled people and for me personally that's usually my, my crutches and so their perceptions are sort of usually you can't do this, you can't do that and I think it's up to us as disabled people to show them what we're actually capable of and, what, and that their perceptions are rubbish. They kind of picture that international symbol of accessibility, the wheelchair logo, you know? So they picture someone 
who is a full-time wheelchair user and who cannot work and who cannot participate in activities. And I think people make their assumptions uh, purely based on that. They see the, the walking aid, the disability before you. I think that's kind of the, like, the generic, like, ingrained, immediately, immediate thought when abled folk think of disabled people. I don't think that the, the whole spectrum of disability is something that's, like, taught or talked about, really. And I think it's even in the word disability, uh, is putting the negative before the positive. And I think it's, you know, it's, it's something you wouldn't do. You would never look at something and take the negatives before the positives. You never judge a book by its cover, but with disability, it's even in the words and the language that we use. When I didn't have the disability, I suppose I just thought disabled people were different from myself when I wasn't disabled and everyone else. But now I'm disabled, I've noticed that I'm no different to anyone else. Well, I am, but that's just me. A piece I did a little while ago. I talked about how it's okay to be sad and it's okay to not be positive 24 7 because <laughs> that's not healthy for anyone and majority of the comments I got on that piece was that how can you think like that you have to be positive or else like what's the point and I'm like you're not positive even as an able person you're not positive 24 7 you can't ask me to be positive 24 7 I am just as normal as you are what with me, what annoys me is I like to talk, but because I talk slower than a lot of other people who are fine, um, they think I'm drunk. I mean, it was it was blooming 8 a.m. in the morning. I went down the shop and said, "Please come have a drink." They went, "Are you drunk?" I went, it's 8 o'clock in the morning, what do you think we're doing on the vodka all night? We have to work a lot more to get to the same, get to the same point. So often we get things like there, or I get extra time to submit an essay, or so on and so on. And I know that a lot of people see those benefits as us getting handouts, uh, and so on when actually that just levels with the peop other people around us that are evil people. Even just by the number of people who want to like suggest cures for your disability or, you know, fixes or just pray for you so that you'll be better. And I think that that's the inherent internalized ableism that like being disabled is wrong. It is not the way you want to be and there's something inherently flawed about you. Society often, when you're ill, they want you to get healthy. You never know, it might be a cure one day. I'm like, that is not how I'm going to live my life. <laughs> I'm not going to live my life hoping there's going to be a cure. I'm going to live my life as well as I can, just out of the circumstances I have. Even if you don't take it personally, it is offensive to like come up to a stranger and be like, can I help fix you, please? Like. Can I fix you? Can I pray for you to be fixed? Like that's, I don't know, that's rude. I don't think we can do enough to spread awareness of disability, but if we are going to spread awareness of disability, it needs to be a two-way relationship and people need to seek out for information that's already out there so we aren't just talking to a brick wall. I don't see disabled people as a real collective because I'm aware that you know disabled people have uh, they have very different goals. So, some, some, and I say disabled people in quote unquote, because we're not a people as such. We're just people that have disability, normal people that have disability that's slightly different. And 
in that some of them, some people with disabilities, they just want to live their lives and do them and just live normally with a crutches or whatever it is and just live their lives. They don't want to be inspirational, or change the face of anything or, or spread awareness. They just want to do themselves. Fine. I'm completely up for that. You do you. And there are other people who want to go and really make a difference and change the way people think. And that's also really fine. I think the disabled community is doing a really good job of speaking up for themselves, spreading education and awareness, talking more openly, using platforms like Twitter to really educate and let people know what's going on and give that like intimate inside look. I think that there could always be done more. I don't think there could be any time where you can be like, you know, chill about your, <laughs> your uh, chill about your awareness. I don't think that's ever going to happen. I think you can always do more and to raise awareness. Uh, but I am very much uh, aware about the f- few charities and the few things that are going around. But that's because I am disabled. Uh, my friends don't see that. I think it's, it's really, it's, it's a question that each person needs to ask themselves. And there's nothing that I can answer. Me personally, do I feel like I'm doing enough? You can always do more. There's a lot of information out there already. And people don't like seek it out making the information that's available more accessible is maybe more important than actually providing additional information we can put together um campaigns and articles and videos and podcasts and stuff about you know what we deal with all day long but it's not getting to the people that if it's only circulating amongst the disabled community I mean, that's great, but we already know that we're disabled. If you want to spread awareness about disability and you're kind of sat at home talking about it, but you're not doing anything, then no, you're not doing enough. If it's something you want to do and you're passionate about, you know, you want to make a difference and you go out and you physically do something to try and change people's perceptions of disabled people, then yes. To get disabilities into the mainstream is very hard just because disability isn't seen as commercial or sellable. So I understand that in the sense of media, it's, it's very hard to sell awareness of disability. The abled community, specifically the media, could do that like everything like tv to film and everything in between could do a lot better job helping to represent us and educate about the realities of living with a disability and not just glamorizing it or shaming it to increase their profit margins it's it's showing what men and what women and what people should be like and it's not really including disabled people as you know as a normal you know for us it's just our normal and and there's nothing different different between me and you know someone else or someone who's able-bodied having someone speak for you and for your experience especially without consulting like you know you about your experience it was written by an able writer and then played by an able actor it's a very strange feeling there are lots of badass disabled people, not just like in character, but in physical body as well. There are definitely disabled people that are physically incredible. And by just dis- by casting Dwayne Johnson over even looking for a disabled badass, that really dismisses the entire community. I don't like it when people get outraged about um, the whole, oh, why didn't you just use a real disabled actor or whatever for that piece? I'm like, I understand that we need more representation. I'm not saying that we don't, but using a really good actor that is well known, has really good uh, like resume and so on and so on, done really good movies and making that actor play disabled can make people want to see more movies and more TV shows like that and then they can implement actual disabled people into the shows. 
we don't have well-known disabled actors because we're not casting disabled actors and giving them the space to become well-known. It's partly to do with the way that the media um, project this image of the perfect or the normal, which it really doesn't include being disabled or having a disability in that normal category. And I think thus people see being disabled and having a disability as you know, a negative, a bad thing, something that isn't normal and isn't sort of good. And I think it's wrong. Disabled people can be inspiring just like anyone else. Um, but they are inspiring for the things that they do, who they are, how they contribute to the world, how they make things better, not inspiring for simply existing as a disabled person. I think there's this uh, huge thing of being like inspiration porn and like disabled people being inspirational for the sake of them being inspirational, you know, like I'll, I'll like wake up and go get a coffee for myself and take my coffee to my table and people be like, wow, you know, good for you, like you're such an inspiration. It's like, okay, I don't mind you thinking that I'm inspirational, but why do you think I'm inspirational? Because I carried a coffee over? No, that's not inspirational, that's just something I can do. Things that are not inspiring are your favorite story. When I was at my office and I opened the door to my office where I I have an office because my professional office building and opening the door with one hand and a lady walked by and stopped and started clapping her hands. It's like Oh my gosh, look at you. You go, girl. You open that door. It's like being someone else's inspiration. I'm like, sure, whatever. I'm just going to live my life and I'm sharing it in some sense. But I know a lot of disabled people just want to live their life. It's because of pity and not because they actually just see that we're living our life, trying to just live it normally. One of my heroes and favorite people on earth is this fellow who is a, a um, particle physicist over at CERN. And he's also a really loud advocate for minority groups. And he does a lot of education and outreach. And he's generally like an incredible human being. And he inspires me. And so I told him so. That's the kind of stuff that's inspiring. People that are doing amazing things with their lives, that are contributing, that are generally fantastic. I think I stuck in the God direction would be to treat someone how they want to be treated. Some people may want to be helped, some people may not. Still thought upon to them if they don't want to. Basically when dealing with disability and disabled people, equality I think is really the thing. Like treating people like people. Making sure everyone can exist safely and comfortably together. Yeah. I don't think that's a big ask. <laughs>